Kip and I are so, so happy to be back in Sydney. And I love Joe and Carrie so much. And talk about what Kip was preaching. He really preached. They have this church into existence in Sydney, in Hong Kong, in Crouching Tiger 2, and in Crouching Tiger 3. I'm so and we've gotten to watch God work through you all, and it moves my heart so much. And I am very emotional today, so I hope God will help me, as John talked about. Um, my topic is miraculous faithfulness. And I have one scripture, Psalm 86, verse 11. Teach me your way, Lord. Wow that I may rely on your yes. faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the death. From the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O oh God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me and our church. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God. Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. When I think of miraculous faithfulness, I think of, number one, God's miraculous faithfulness. Uh, I believe God has been incredibly faithful to me all my life. Uh, a lot of you know I was born in Havana, Cuba, and our country went through a communist revolution that was horrible. Um, and you know, we were very blessed by God to escape on a boat when I was about four years old. And we left for religious freedom. And God brought us to America, but to a little town called Gainesville, Florida. And, you know, I grew up in a Latin home. Those of you who are Latinos, are there a few Latinos out there? Yes. Very strict. We went to church every Sunday, but I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know how to pray. And, you know, as Kip shared, I'm so grateful he went to my 50th high school reunion with me because it was uh, something I wasn't sure I really wanted to do. Uh, and I begged God that Kip would come. And <laughs> I asked him, he said, okay, Elena, I don't know but two people in your class, but I'll come to support you. And he was incredible. He reached out to everybody, took pictures, really gave me strength, too, because um, I did want to share. I felt like God was giving me an opportunity. A month before the reunion, they asked me to give the introduction to the whole event and then to pray. And our school was not a Christian school. It was a secular, you know, college prep type school. And I only got in because I was a Cuban immigrant. And I got a scholarship to go there. It was semi-private. And it saved me in so many areas as far as my education. As Kip said, they were very kind to me. I grew a lot in my tennis confidence. I love to beat guys on the court. And, but I had a lot of darkness in my heart. My senior year was uh, the worst year of my life. Um, and a lot of my friends did not know because I knew how to put up a good mask. Uh, but I did pray that prayer that Kip shared. I begged God to help me or take my life because I was so confused, so dark. My bitterness, my hate, I was bullied by someone in our family and I hated that person. And that kills your heart no matter who you are. Yeah. And I had a smile on my face and I was out there cheering and I loved tennis because I could get my anger out on the court. Um, and I'm so grateful my older sister Carmen became a Christian yeah. at the University of Florida. The campus ministry there. And of course at that time that was the only place where 
the Bible was being preached in a powerful way to campus. Yeah. And the rest of the church wasn't so great, but the campus ministry was awesome. Um, and I met Kip there, and that was awesome. Um, but anyway, I just want to share how God took care of me, because here I was looking like everything was great on the outside, but I wanted to die wow. on the inside. I was so hurting for God in a relationship with God and a purpose. And I'll never forget the day I got baptized, August 8th, 1973, like ages ago. I was so full of peace. I sensed God's abounding love that's in this scripture. And I committed that night to have an undivided heart for the rest of my life. But I have to keep doing that. And that's my second point. God's miraculous faithfulness and then my undivided faithfulness to God. It's something, as it says here, we need to ask God to help us give us this undivided heart. Because Satan wants to destroy your heart. And as John preached... When you pray, you gotta pray from your heart. When you sing, you gotta sing from your heart. When you read your Bible in the morning, you gotta read with your heart. You can't numb out. And I had learned how to numb out. And I had to learn as a Christian to keep my heart engaged. And I'm so grateful to be married to Kip, because you guys know he's not a, he's a very engaged person, a very passionate person. totally transformed my life and that's why it was so great to go back and to share about how God had healed my heart and my soul and you know to see some of my old friends where they've been through a number of painful painful things without God numerous divorces horrible life situations but with God and having Kip right there, I mean, I shared we've been married 46 years and I love him even more today. It was just such an amazing opportunity. And I am grateful that God gave me that chance. But as it says here, you really need to pray. Verse 11, give me an undivided heart. Yes. Every day in your quiet time, rely on God, not on yourself. That's why we have God and the Holy Spirit. Because we can't do it on our own. But please consider where you're at tonight. Amen. You know, do you have an undivided heart Amen. for God? And if you don't, pray to God. Beg Him. He'll give it to you. He doesn't want to hurt us. He's trying to help us. He loves us more than anybody in the whole world. And I don't know if you felt love in your life and maybe that's part of the issue too. Well, get in your Bible. Look at Jesus, how much He loves us died on the cross as Linda preached so eloquently. We are so loved by God. And I just pray that you'll think about where you are in your heart, your faithfulness to God. And, you know, as Kip shared, um, I'll be 50 years as a disciple this year. You know, I've seen so many miracles. His mom getting baptized last year was one of the top miracles. But, you know, my being healed of cancer, I know, is a miracle. Uh, I begged God to be healed and give me 20 more years. And he has done that. Um, and I'm so grateful for Kip's love and support. I don't know where you're at tonight, but please, please, please. Look at where your heart is with God. And look at how much he loves you. His faithfulness to you. Thank you so much. I love you.